Everyone loves Unreal Engine, and that's probably because it looks so freaking good, but also because tons of people probably love playing their games at 30 FPS and at rendered at 540p. It's not just us that love Unreal Engine, but it's developers that love it too. Every single game coming out in the next five years is going to be made in Unreal Engine 5. And that's probably because this thing is literally free until you make a million dollars using it. So with the massive popularity of Unreal Engine and its major competitor, Unity, just flushing its reputation down the drain, is this a good thing for the gaming market? Or is Unreal Engine going to be ruining the future of gaming? Or I guess, do you want to have the future of graphics cards with PowerColor Red Devil 7900 series beefy graphics cards can look even cooler with custom backplates. With the awesome looking generative and intrusive backplates, you can customize your GPU to your heart's content. And it's never been so gosh darn easy. These things have magnets on them. These backplates are available at any of your favorite shops. And if you're interested, go ahead and check the link in the description, along with other products on PowerColor's website, like this mouse pad that looks really cool. Huge thanks to PowerColor for sponsoring this video. And let's get right back into it. If you go on YouTube, for example, and you just look up UE5 tutorials with millions of views, there's a huge community that is at least trying Unreal Engine. Say like you're you're making a game, you can get assets, you can get effects, you can get scripts written and everything that makes the process of developing a game a lot easier especially for beginners. And this tech as well does allow smaller studios to get more impressive visuals with less effort than we've ever seen before. So let's go ahead and hop into Fortnite and check out why this is the case. So we're in Fortnite just with rasterized graphics on one of these like kind of test demo maps that are out there. You can see in this room like it isn't that dark or anything like that when you would probably think I mean there's barely any light you'd think that it'd be decently dark in this room okay so you can see with nanite and luminon you can clearly see there's a pretty major difference I mean the room looks a lot darker it's probably the thing you're gonna notice first but if you look a little bit closer it's not just the room is darker but it's actually that the light sources are behaving properly you know with rasterization you have to bake your lights and everything and with Lumen, you can just literally, as a game developer, just plop a light there and it's gonna light all the, this up in real time. And that's a really powerful tool, especially for small time and indie developers because it saves a lot of time. The big problem is in the, the top left corner of the screen, we're getting like 70 FPS compared to when we were on rasterization, we're getting like 170. We lost over 100 FPS. It's kind of like turning on ray tracing in a lot of games. Most people don't turn on ray tracing because it's so demanding. And for that reason, most games don't force you to use ray tracing. We're not at that point in time where you can make every game ray tracing only. And smaller teams, in order to save that time, save that money, want to only use Nanite and Lumen. If you only use Nanite and Lumen, most people can't run the game. So you'd think it would help smaller developers, and it just really doesn't. And I really think that this is one of the reasons why Gunfire Games, the makers of Remnant 2, which is an Unreal Engine 5 game, this game does not have Lumen in it. It does include Nanite, but if it also had Lumen, then it would be even more graphically demanding for systems. And that would mean that a lot of people just wouldn't be able to play it. This game was already difficult to run just being in Unreal Engine 5 and using Nanite, but they didn't want to push that, that barrier even more for a lot of people, especially because Gunfire Games is a pretty small studio. But the most egregious and I would even argue sad example of this is Immortals of Avium, a game that came out in what, like, was that June, July? I think it was July. The makers of it are as Ascendant Studios. This is a small team. And what they said that they did not spare any expense at the graphical fidelity of this game. And it lets them do this so dramatically quicker than ever before. If you go to the system requirements for the game, you know, just to play this game at 1080p, 60 FPS, you have to use an RTX 2080 Super, which was a like top end graphics card. What was that like four or five years ago? I know it's a little bit older now, but just to play the game. And I really do think that this played a huge factor into like when people were thinking about trying this game that they didn't end up going for it. Just selling people on graphics and not being able to run the game is definitely not, I don't think, the risk that a small studio should be taking if they want people to actually buy and try their game. And it's a sad reality of the situation, but I think it's true. And because, you know, they're a new studio and everything and the game didn't perform that well, it seems like they've laid off about 45% of Ascendant Studios' workforce. 
and I think this is a clear example that we're going to see games that use Unreal Engine 5 and its technology well, and we're going to see studios that, that don't use it well. <laughs> and it sucks to see, but it's just reality. We can also take another game like Jedi Survivor, and this game was basically known for being very unoptimized and running very poorly, especially with CPU performance on PC, but it wasn't good on consoles either. You know, the 7800 XT, according to Daniel Owen here, was getting about 91 FPS or something like that in Jedi Survivor, and this game was built on Unreal Engine 4. But you can also compare it to another game that's also made in Unreal Engine 4. I know I'm not talking about Unreal Engine 5 here, so there's no Nanite or Lumen features, but another game that's releasing pretty soon in October is Ghost Runner 2 that is made in UE4 and you can just see by the gameplay here the same graphics card 7800 XT at epic settings 1440p is just like absolutely crushing it the FPS is insane and it's really something to be said that you can have two studios that are using the exact same engine and you can get vastly different results based on the optimizations that were made. Ghost Runner 2 in my personal opinion it feels like Doom Eternal and that is a huge compliment because Doom Eternal is one of the best optimized, you know, balance between performance and graphics that I've seen in any game. However, though, and this might be a little bit controversial, I really don't believe that the optimization that is in games is really the end all be all because it's clear that there are developers that can make games that are a lot easier to run, even in the same engine like Unreal Engine 5, you know, like Fortnite, for example. And the games that more people can play are probably going to be the ones that are more popular and that succeed. And hopefully, you know, I can't guarantee this, but hopefully the hardware that we're using to run games, you know, even if they are more demanding with Unreal Engine 5, it isn't just like the hardware that can help to optimize things or the devs, but Epic themselves seem to be very consistent and, you know, adding other features to Unreal Engine that makes it more optimal to run. Like just check out this, this little feature. In 5.3, we now have the ability to use Lumen Reflections with baked lighting. So we do not have to use Lumen Global Illumination to get Lumen Reflections. So this is another optimization that developers can make for Unreal Engine, you know, 5.3 just got another update. So to me, optimizations in games or even hardware capabilities that we don't have right now doesn't really seem like the major issue that's going on with Unreal Engine, how it's affecting the game and market. You know, I mean, things are going to get better. So the problem that I do actually see is that Unreal Engine could become the only engine that game developers use. Now what I found really crazy is CD Projekt Red, so the makers of The Witcher and Cyberpunk. You know, Cyberpunk is easily one of the most beautiful games that we have right now, even if you don't crank all the ray tracing and stuff like that. With their future games, CD Projekt Red is actually going to be switching to UE5. Even a company that has invested so heavily into an engine that works as well as the red engine for Cyberpunk, they're leaving their own engine. If this isn't telling for the, the game market as a whole, like I don't know what to say. Like UE5 could easily become basically the only engine that people use and especially when their biggest competition like unity is just making like huge blunders right now and really losing their trust for people even if they apologize like so this does give me some fear like is any other engine going to be be able to catch up with the absolute dominance and technological progression that Unreal Engine has been making. And one of the main arguments against using Unreal Engine is that it's apparently harder to make 2D games with Unreal Engine. I mean, I haven't I haven't personally made a game. I tried it and I didn't really like it. With all of that Fortnite money, like who is really to say why couldn't they just build up their 2D engine to make it easier to make 2D games? And this possible Unreal Engine monopoly that's going on could really be bad for us as gamers in a lot of different ways. Like it's very much possible that we could see a lot of games look and feel the same as they're all made in the same engine and a lot of devs might rely on the features that are part of the engine. There's a great video that was made on this by Ethereal Pineapple, funny name. What he's mainly talking about in this video is, you know, games are going to look the same uh, to some degree. if devs don't innovate on them and actually want to stand out. And if Unreal becomes the only engine that people really use, this could also cause a lot of stagnation in gaming 
and innovation in gaming in general. It kind of ties into the other one. Even though right now, Unreal is putting out a lot of updates that seem very significant, like 5.3 as of recently. Like what does this say that Epic has to keep doing this and they have to keep innovating? And also if Unreal ends up having like a monopoly on the game engine market, who is to also say currently the monetization model, I think for Unreal Engine is quite fair. You know, if you make over a million dollars and you get basically a 5% tax, who is to say that they don't eventually get greedy? But when it comes down to it, that charge that developers have to pay Epic that, that does get passed down to us as consumers. So who is to say that Epic won't get greedy and they won't stop innovating? That's how monopolies usually go. And this is all scary stuff and I really don't know how it's gonna go into the future for game engines. So like, is Unreal Engine 5 ruining games? Apart from the FPS problems that are going on, the actual performance and optimizations that are happening, Unreal Engine 5 is not ruining games right now. Honestly, the technology that's in it is really impressive and it has a lot of capabilities and it's really up to the devs and stuff to use it properly. However though, Unreal Engine's popularity and its dominance in the game engine market could definitely be a problem and has some actual like tangible issues for us as innovation and stuff like that could, could slow down. In the lens of a developer, it also might seem like you have less options when one engine is just so far ahead of all the other ones that where it, will the creativity blossom and stuff when making games? Although the game engine, I will say, is only one part of the equation to make a game, it does come down to the devs to make interesting games. And if everything starts looking the same, I think a lot of us as consumers are probably gonna stop buying the games. So devs have to keep innovating to keep things interesting. As much as Unreal Engine could possibly an, it be an issue for us. We'll have to see how it affects the studios in the long term. And I would really hope that there will be more competition in the game engine market because that's good for basically everyone when it comes down to it. That's gonna be it for me though, talking about Unreal Engine 5 and how it could possibly be ruining gaming, but you guys can let me know in the comments below what you think about all this stuff. I really wanna talk about this because so many games have just been coming out and they're so freaking demanding using Unreal Engine that this is constantly on my mind. But it's not always just demanding on your graphics card. So if you wanna see why this could be demanding on your CPU, then you can watch uh, this video here. It's uh, pretty interesting nowadays with modern gaming, but this has been it for me on this topic. I'll see you guys in the next video. You have a good one. Peace.